You know, one of the coolest things I love about Fresno is the walking and biking trails that we have here. And on these trails, have you ever seen these? They are the underground tunnels that go underneath the street. Those are so cool. When my kids and I go through it, we hoop and holler, we make all the echoes go, but it reminds me of this tunnel down in downtown Phoenix. I grew up in Phoenix and my dad used to drive us through this tunnel and this tunnel was so long and he would challenge us to hold our breath. And so we go, <gasps> Have you ever done that? And you just hold your breath? Now this tunnel was so long and when we got near the end, my dad would slow way down, slow down. And then you're just having to like hold on to your breath and you're like. Mm. My dad didn't mean to, but he was teaching us endurance. He was teaching us patience to hold on till the end. He was teaching us to hold on. And today I'm gonna to tell you a story uh, about a guy who had to wait to become king and he had to do it and he had to be patient and he had to endure all the way to the end now i want you to hold your breath with me in this tunnel as i tell you the story using my mind and movie magic here we go ready one two three god had asked samuel to go find a new king and the reason why he had to find a new king was because the old king was just terrible his name was saul Saul was a terrible king, chosen to lead Israel by God, and Saul chose to disobey God time and time again. And so God told Samuel, go find a new king, and uh, he's going to be at the house of Jesse. So Samuel goes, and he goes to Jesse's house, and he finds out that Jesse has eight sons. And the first son he looks at is big and burly and strong, probably with sweet beard going on. And... Uh, and Samuel was like, well, this obviously has to be the guy. Well, no, that wasn't the guy. And God said, you're looking at the outside. I'm looking at the heart. And so he went through all seven brothers and none of them were fit to be king. And he said, wait, I thought you had eight sons. And he's like, oh, I do. But the other one's a shepherd out in the field. And when he found David, he went there and he anointed David to be king over Israel. And God said, this is the guy. Well, Saul did not like that. Saul brought David into his camp, into his court, and David kept doing these amazing things, and Saul was getting really irritated with it. So eventually, he made David out to be a fugitive and chased him out of Israel and chased him around the countryside. Did you make it? Oh, that was tough. I had to learn endurance too, just like David. Now, I want to tell you the rest of that story. Now, my dad didn't mean to teach us endurance by doing that. He was he was teasing. He was having fun with us. And something I do with my kids, you slow down in the tunnel, you force them to hold their breath, and they're just, just waiting because they see the finish line. They know when it's coming, and, and they're just holding on till the end. That's the same thing with David. David knew what was coming. He knew that God was going to put him in his king, but he had to wait and wait and wait. Even when Saul tried to hurt him, even when Saul tried to chase him down and kill him, David waited for God. There was a moment when Saul entered the cave that David was in, and he went in there to use the restroom, and David and all of his men were waiting inside of this cave. They were waiting there, and David's men said, David, this is your moment. Kill him. Take him. You can become king. Do it. Just kill Saul. David said, shh, no, I'm not going to do anything to hurt King Saul. He's God's chosen king. I have to wait. He knew that God did not want him to hurt the king. He knew that God had chosen him to be the next king. He just had to wait and wait and wait. And eventually he became king. And the Bible says that he was one of the greatest kings that Israel ever had. And I think that had to do with the patience that he learned while he was waiting for God. The Bible says that God is not slow to keep his promises. He's just waiting for the perfect time. Now for us, it feels like we're in the waiting game right now. We're waiting until we can go back to school. We're waiting until our lives return to normal. And we may want to rush ahead. We may want to go, okay, I just need this to be over with. But think about the patience that you're learning right now. Think about what God is trying to teach you right now. Because when the question is, where is God? Well, in moments like this, where is God? God is here. When it feels like it's taking forever, God is there. He's with you in this time. 
and he wants to teach you something. He wants to grow you and build you into a much better person than you could have ever been. He's shaping you. He's forming you. He's turning you into what he wants you to be. And that's going to take some time. And so until we are out of this, let's practice some patience. Because we know that this is not going to last forever. Even though it feels like it's taking forever, just look for that light at the end of the tunnel. And wait and wait and wait. And you're going to come out of the tunnel better, stronger, with more endurance, with more patience. So let's pray and let's ask God to help us. Now the Bible says if you want to become a part of God's family, it's easy. You just got to do two things. One, you got to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And two, you got to say it out loud. If you've never done that before, let's take a moment and let's pray and ask to become a part of God's family. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm sorry. I've messed up. I knew what was right and I did what was wrong. But I believe that you came here. I believe that you died. And I believe that you came back to life so that I could be a part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that we are all on that now that we are all on that same playing field, let's pray and ask God to give us some patience and look for the ways that he's shaping us during this time. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we know that there is a light at the end of this tunnel and it feels like it's taking forever. But we know that you are leading us. We know that you are guiding us. We know that you are shaping us. And so help us have the patience to wait until the end because we know that you're here. We know that you're in charge. And we know that we're gonna come out on the other side of this better and stronger with more endurance and more patience. So God, help us wait and be patient and see how you're growing us and building us. And we thank you for who you're turning us into. In Jesus' name, amen.